Hello, it's time for another episode of Discipleship Today. My name is Pastor Bob Benson. Uh, I pastor Christ Lutheran Church in Bemis Point, New York. Uh, we uh, have been using the book of John as a discipleship text because of this special relationship that John, we think, was one of the youngest disciples seemed to have with Jesus. Matter of fact, at the Last Supper, it says that John leaned back against Jesus' breast John refers to himself all through the book as that disciple that Jesus loved. And uh, so there was this special relationship between this older mentor and this younger disciple. And uh, we've been walking through that book. We're in chapter 20. I'm going to read for you about 10 verses in the beginning of chapter 20 as we draw to the end of uh, the book of John. And I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going towards the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb and saw the linen clothes lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Here we just get a glimpse of, of what Peter and John saw as they arrived at the tomb. Uh, the news from Mary Magdalene that the stone had been rolled away and that the master had been taken away. Uh, and John, in writing about himself in this whole thing, uh, <laughs> not referring to himself as John, but referring to himself as the one that Jesus had loved, uh, showing that special relationship. Uh, but this is, this is a description of what happened. Um, this, is, this is historic. Um, but you can almost feel the emotion of these two disciples as they get there. Uh, it says John arrived first, but he did not rush into the tomb. Why? There's a reason why. Uh, this was a high uh, holy week. Uh, this is beyond the Sabbath. This is the first day of the week now. But um, John didn't go in because it would have made him unclean. Peter, we think of Peter as impetuous, as, as uh, doing the things that everybody else wanted to do without thinking about it. Peter burst into the place and was looking around and saw these things. And it's only after Peter went in that John follows. Um, <laughs> interesting fact here, they found this, the linen cloth folded up the head covering. Um, and, and that's an interesting thing. And in our Roman Greco thinking, we don't think as a Jewish person. When, when you were at a banquet and uh, the person that was the host of the banquet would get up to greet people as they arrived, he would always take his napkin, fold it, and set it on the table, which told the servants that he wasn't done yet. He was coming back to that plate. And Jesus, as he's taken away, that folded linen napkin was a sign to the Jewish people, I'm coming back. I'm not done here yet. And uh, sometimes I think we, we jump right over that fact. We don't see this folded linen cloth that was the face covering uh, as anything significant. But it was. It was to them. They did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. And that's why verse 9 is included in there. Um, if they had thought it all the way through, if they had taken the time and thought about it, they would have realized that that napkin was indicating that he would return, that he would rise from the dead. And then uh, <laughs> not sure what to do with all of this is why verse 10 is there. Then the disciples went back to their home. I think if they had known that Jesus was returning, 
I think they might have just hung out right there, waiting for him to come back. And it's because they didn't understand all of it. And how many times today don't we understand everything that's going on around us? There's so many things going on around us in our world today, politically, economically, socially, that we don't completely understand. But that doesn't mean that we don't anticipate Jesus' return still today. And I guess that's my encouragement for you this week. Jesus said that he's coming back to judge the living and the dead. And uh, I know one thing for sure. We're a day closer to that event than we were yesterday. And I'd, I'd like to encourage you to keep looking for Jesus' return. But as we wait for his return, we need to be doing Matthew 28, making disciples, teaching them to observe all the things that Jesus taught. So for Discipleship Today, my name is Pastor Bob Benson. and I'm going to encourage you to be discipling and being discipled. Thank you for taking your time to watch me today.